in this chapter, we're going backwards a little bit to take care of capacitors as a circuit component, and we can arrange capacitor in series and parallel, very similar to what we would do with resistors. However, as I'll show you in a second, the rules that end up coming out is actually opposite to the resistor, but the logic of coming up with them is exactly the same. What is the core of the difference is the governing equation of the resistor is Ohm's law, which is V equals I times R. But for a capacitor, the governing equation is V equals Q over C, where you know that I is equal to dQ dt, or flip the other way as an integral. You can see that the charge on the capacitor is related to the current. And the forms here is opposite because it's I times R over here, whereas Q over C over here. And that's what results in the different expressions. Here, I'll take a minute to quickly derive because it's easy enough to do so. The two expressions for parallel and series capacitors. So in the case of the parallel combination, it looks like this. And you want to have combined, say, C1 and C2 into a single equivalent capacitor. When things are in parallel, what do we know? Well, we know if things are parallel that the delta V must be the same. Where So we can say V1 is equal to V2 is equal to V of the overall thing, which we'll call just simply V. That basically results from the loop rule. Whenever things are in parallel, they're going to have the same potential across them because it's the two same points in the circuit. And because they're in parallel, the current splits. So the current adds up, and therefore the charges related to the current also adds up to give you the overall charge. Manipulating the governing equation, so instead of saying V is equal to Q over C, we can say Q is equal to C times V. So bring that over and expanding this, we can get C1 V1 plus C2 V2 is equal to whatever CP VP is, where we know that because of this, all the voltages are the same, so they cancel out. And so you can see in a parallel, the equivalent parallel capacitance is just the sum of the individual capacitance. So CP is equal to C1 plus C2. If we're dealing with series, we're trying to chain up two of these and trying to represent that with a single capacitor. And in series, again, because of the loop rule, you end up adding the voltages to get you the overall voltages across the front and the back. And then, because the current is the same, whatever charge that ends up building up here rejects a certain amount of charge that gets over here and induces a, the same charge on that side for the same current to go out. So just like how in series, current is the same, the amount of charge that gets stored up in the capacitor is the same for every single capacitor. So then we take this here, voltage is equal to Q1 over C1 plus Q2 over C2 is equal to QS over CS. The Qs are the same, so they cancel out. And then this gives us the final expression of 1 over CS is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. And that should look familiar in the sense that it looks similar to resistors in parallel. But the thing is, for capacitor, it ends up being backwards because of the different forms of their governing equations. So in parallel, you add up the capacitance. And in series, you add up the reciprocal to get the reciprocal, the opposite to the resistor. So let's apply this to this question fairly quickly, cleaning things up a little bit. Let's start. They want us to find the total capacitance of the entire combination, presumably from here to here. We're trying to replace it and reduce it down to a single capacitor. So we'll do one step at a time. The only thing that is purely in either series or parallel in this case is this part here. So we'll take this and make that into CP. Because we're in parallel, we use the parallel rule. It's equal to the sum of the two capacitors, which is fairly easy. So that's 12.5 microfarads, very typical capacitor values. So this effectively has been reduced to CP and 0.30 microfarad. 
you notice that whenever we have capacitors in parallel, the capacitance always add up, similar to how resistors in series always end up with a resistance bigger than the biggest one that's participating. So in parallel, capacitors always increase bigger than the original ones. So now we have this thing in series. So we have CS and using 1 over CS is equal to 1 over my 12.5 microfarads plus 0 0.3 microfarads. Calculator work gives you some number, but this isn't the capacitance itself, it's 1 over the capacitance, and this can be shown by the unit being underneath being microfarad. So we do the 1 over, and we end up getting something just a little smaller than the smallest of the capacitance, as is normal for anything in series. The capacitance always decreases as you add more capacitors in series. So just a very quick overview of capacitors arranged in parallel and series combination. We treat it very much like how we had treated resistors before. It's just that the rules are different because the governing equation of a capacitor is given by that.